Hello and welcome to my channel and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to be talking about JavaScript's async await, which is an ES2015, I guess technically, uh, ES2017 specification that is already available in a few browsers, uh, support full support of Node 8, um, uh, Internet Explorer Edge, Chrome 55, Firefox 52, Opera 42, and everybody's talking about it. And people think it's this really complicated process. So today I'm going to try to explain it to you in 15 minutes. Um, I, and if I can't get it done in 15 minutes, I'm going to restart the video. I've already done so twice, once because I messed up, second time because I did get it done in 15 minutes, but I spent most of that time explaining everything before async away. So let's try to get through this real quick. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the timer. I'm recording. All right, and let's do this. So JavaScript is a language that supports asynchronous programming. That means that you can fire off some kind of an action within JavaScript that um, that gets done, but none of your other code gets blocked. So what that means is that if you're on Facebook and you like a comment or something, that doesn't mean that your entire page basically locks up until that request comes back as a response. All right, you send out an API request and you say, like this page, like this comment, and you can still browse the rest of Facebook. And when that response comes back, uh, you know your, your, the page can actually deal with it once it comes back, but it's non-blocking. Uh, that means that you know if you're in Node and you wanna to try to read a file or contact the database when an API hit it hits you, you can ask the database for the data, but you can still process other requests. Uh, if you're in the browser, it means you can uh, ask uh, you know an API for some additional data and still scroll through the page, which is fantastic. It's lovely. It's amazing. It means that you can click on view more comments and scroll down, and then the view com the actual comments appear later, and that's okay, and that's great, and it works, and it's wonderful. But how does async work? So in JavaScript, traditionally async works through via callbacks, right? So this is what a callback looks like. Let's just say we want to read a file called uh, address book .xlsx, um, and uh, we want to read it, right? And in another language, you might you might do something like var l equals read file. That doesn't work in in uh, in uh, JavaScript because you cannot treat asynchronous code as synchronous. Uh, so what you have to do is uh, create a callback. A callback is basically a function that gets run after the file is be, uh, has been read, and so we can do console console log file. Yeah, cool. Um, so this is how callbacks work. Uh, what sucks is that if you have a lot of logic that depends on asynchronous actions, on a bunch of asynchronous actions, you cannot create this callback of hell. So I'm going to go ahead and write this out real quick without much explanation, but I think it should be pretty self-explanatory. We're going to get an address book. Okay, so as you can see, you, you start to get into the situation where you have this callback hell, right? You, you have callback after callback after callback after callback, and it's difficult to keep track of what's going on. And none of this is getting, um, none of this, none of this has any um, error testing. You know, if there was an error, you would have to set, pass a second argument most of the time, uh, or you would, it would be, uh, it would be kind of like this, you know, and you're not handling errors. And what happens if there's an error down the chain? How does that bubble up all the way up the chain? And all this kind of crazy stuff, and it doesn't look good. So when people did realize that callbacks don't really work, uh, they come up with an idea called promises. So promises are ba basically look kind of like callbacks, but avoid this nesting, crazy nesting situation. So let's just say we we try to read a file. We have address book .xlsx. Um, instead of doing a callback here, we do a dump then. Uh, and then the dump then has a few cool things going for it. Um, let's go ahead and recreate that original structure, right? So we're gonna fetch existing 
people, whatever, uh, user, maybe, you know, for a specific user, we're gonna dump then people, we're gonna do, uh, you know, constant new people equals uh, diff people, you know, we're gonna give it the original people, and, oh, how do I access that file from way up here? Right, so this is already one one issue with uh, with uh, with promises that you can't kind of pass files, or you can't pass variables through the chain easily. So we're just gonna do a uh, let uh, red file equals you know let's just let file. We're gonna create a file variable. It's gonna be a um, address book file. We're gonna save it. We're gonna say file equals address book file. We're gonna save it outside of the chain. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and just pass it in here, and we're gonna re we're gonna return um, what is it at people people, and we're gonna go ahead and do that then, and we're gonna go ahead and do a console log. Uh, we're done. Okay, and so this is kind of the basics of promises, and we're, we can do a dot catch, and the dot catch should catch an error from any of the promise chains above it, right? So dot catch uh, console error uh, e.stack stack or e dot message e dot stack whatever. I don't remember the exact syntax um, for that. Um, so what you're kind of seeing here is that um, if you want to if you want to save some kind of data outside of the chain, you have, you have to do it outside of the chain. You can't really pass it through the chain in any way. So that's kind of a detriment to promises. But you can already see that you don't have as much nesting. It's it makes much more sense. You can create these functions, and as long as they don't need to access anything outside of the chain. Uh, you know, they can be completely separate functions and it can look beautiful, it can be amazing. Um, and then you have just a single dot catch, you don't have to do error catching for, uh, or you don't have to look out for errors, you know, on every single step, just the last one. It's great, it works wonderful. But it's confusing to people and you still have this weird nesting and it, it's it's not super straightforward. And so um, there there's this sugar syntax and async await really is sugar. And this is what it looks like. Um, you have to wrap your entire logic into in a function so you that you prefix with async so uh, the JavaScript knows that it's going to be resolving a bunch of stuff in, inside using async await so we're going to call this process address book um, and we're just going to give it a path why not right um, and then let's say we want that file right so we're going to do a constant file and we're just going to say await and we're going to use that previous promise and we're just going to pass it a path and it works. Now, um, what was the next thing that we did? Uh, we f uh, fetched existing people. So we'll say constant people equals await fetch existing people. And we said like user ID three or something, right? And that's it. And now we now people are stored in the people variable. Um, then we had then we created like you know uh, new people, right? New people is uh, like a diff spreadsheet or something. I can't remember the name of that function. And we just had people in the file, um, and then we save those people. So we can actually return that, and we can say return add new people, new people, and that's it. Um, and as long as we act, well, why 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 would we do that? Let's just do an await. Um, Result equals and then return result. Okay, so and this is it. We simplified like a ton of logic, ton of nesting, ton of chaining on whatever into a very short and succinct function that makes sense. So how does all of this work? I like to say that async await is kind of like this type system for JavaScript. It's like this hint, right? With the keyword async, we're saying that whatever happens in this function look out for the await keyword you're going to need to resolve it as a you're going to need to resolve that promise and so this function itself is a promise actually right so we're going to do that and when we do await we say the following function whatever follows the keyword await is a promise that needs to be resolved so what javascript actually does and under the hood if i understand this correctly is this entire thing gets converted into an actual promise chain so what we wrote earlier is actually what this code might look like under the hood or how it might behave under the hood right um, but it looks better for us so it looks better but it works exactly like that promise chaining um, it's just a really much nicer syntax what some some cool things that we can do with this is we can do a try catch block 
we do a try catch block on an async await function, um, this actually works as a dot catch. Um, it creates those chains. Um, it creates it creates those promise chains, you know, under the hood, and then it appends a dot catch. <laughs> so it works for us without us having to create some kind of a weird catch thing. Now. Um, if you know promises well or callbacks or whatever, if you try to do a try catch on prom on and wrap an entire promise or callback uh, or sorry asynchronous functions and the callbacks, none of that is gonna work. All of that is gonna fail on you. It's gonna tell you that everything works well even if it's failing horribly. So yeah, this is async await. It's we have five minutes to go. So I'm gonna go into some cool other cool things, but this is basically what it is. It's it's a function that you designate async. I, I feel like I'm repeating myself, and that's okay because I really need to drill this into your head. Um, and the await keyword needs to be followed by a promise, right? And then uh, Chrome or or Firefox or Internet Explorer Edge, yes, IE Edge does have support, or Node 8 is just gonna resolve that promise and store the store the result in this variable. Now there's some cool things you can do. What if I wanted to uh, what if I wanted to console log some oh, let's see. Is console log a good one? What if I wanted to console log something? What if I wanted to do a console log uh, current um, what is it? Count people. For some reason, I wanted to console log the number of people currently in the address book for this user uh, because I'm writing an import script and I need that kind of metric. I can just do this and I can nest the await keyword in there. In fact, we can do this. Wait, fetch existing people user ID three uh, read file path. Oh, I have to do an await. And oh, oops. This is how I'm gonna spend the last three minutes of my timer. <laughs> and we simplified. Well, it, I don't. I don't like this. I'd rather have every single one of these stored in its own variable. But you can do this, and it's going to resolve this promise, this promise over here, fetch existing people, then read file, and once it's done resolving those, it stores them in a temporary variable, and it passes it to the diff spreadsheet function. And that's it, and it works. And you can, again, do a try catch on it if you need to for, you know, in case you're expecting there to be an error, you know? And it works, and it's fantastic, and I love it. So um, the caveat is that you have to have promises. So what do you do with all those functions that utilize callbacks? Well, um, on the front end, or I guess in older versions of Node, you can use a library called Bluebird. So you can do, um, and the library called Blue, Bluebird has a uh, um, a utility called Permissify. So we're gonna say, require. now yes, I'm using required, I can do import, export, whatever. Uh, for these purposes, we're just gonna do this. And you can, you can have a function, I don't know, or my call, my async call backable func equals require whatever, and then we can just do var uh, my promise async func is equal to promise dot promiseify my async. Oh my god, that's a horrible name that I came up with. But you can do this, and this works, and this will uh, this will get it ready, and you can create your async function, uh, whatever and do an await my promise. Now note, you cannot do my, you know, you cannot do an await on a function that requires a callback. You can only do an await on a thenable, on a, on a function that um, accepts, uh, that, that's a promise, right? Um, in, uh, in node version eight, this is actually built into node. Um, so you can do utils, I think it's require utils, oh, oops, utils, and utils has a dot .promiseify, so you can have a var my promise func equals uh, utils.promiseify. I'm gonna show you how easy this is. I'm gonna say cb, and this is gonna be our call backable function. And this works, and now this is a promise, and you can do async function, whatever. Um, await my promise funk. And this works. This this really works. Um, 
the util that utils that permissify turns this function that technically requires a callback. It's not an asynchronous function, but it does require a callback into a promise. Uh, what's even better is that because this is built in, uh, the creators of Node or whatever, whoever is working on Node and on this specific utility, um, built in support for callbacks for what's, what are called Node style callbacks. And those are callbacks that have uh, like switched arguments that might have a callback first and then something else or the callback might not be the last argument the most of the permissify libraries require the callback to be the last argument now utils um, node 8 utils allow you to have that anywhere in uh, it can be in any place in 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 the in your arguments so you know instead of having function CB right um, my FX twenty seconds. Um, you can actually have CB. I don't know uh, rams, or you can have something. Um, and there is a way, and I'm not going to go through that, but you can actually look at it. There is a way to pass that in and uh, tell um, tell Node how to permissify that. What's even better is that, and I'm I'm out of time, but what I meant to say is that uh, the built-in Node utilities that use this kind of weird syntax. Um, uh, are already uh, the 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 utils that permissify can recognize them and permissify them correctly without you having to do anything else, and that's it. That's async await. So to summarize it, I'm gonna go ahead and just make the timer disappear. I, I described it in 15 minutes. I think I explained it very well. I went into a little bit more details, but to summarize it, it is a sugar syntax around promises that allows you to write a syntax. There was you write, write code that looks like it's synchronous, but it's asynchronous and makes it easier for you to try and cat, do, do a try catch blocks to pass asynchronous data or rather data resulting from asynchronous calls into synchronous functions much more easily. You can console log out promise results without having to do a dump then. You avoid chains, you avoid having to um, uh, pull data outside of the chain just to pass it you know lower down the chain you avoid all these issues with async await i hope you enjoyed my video if you have any questions go ahead and ask questions on uh below uh in the comments and if you have any feedback i'd love to hear it uh if you have any issues with async await um go ahead and let me know and i'll help you figure it out you know that's what i'm here for i answer comments and i help people figure stuff out so but thank you for watching subscribe like do all that stuff that you would normally do for other people that whose videos you watch